Welcome back to 40 TV. I'm your host, 40. Today I'm excited to introduce you to another Final Cut Pro X uh, plugin. This one's a generator. It's called Split Screen Plus. It basically splits up your screen in many different ways. In fact, the Plus version includes 25 different generators. I have a light version available for download for free. Um, the light version has three different generators included. So first things first, after you've downloaded the plugin, which comes in a zip file, you're going to open up your downloads directory. Once you do that, you're going to find the installer package. This one's split screen, split screen plus. Go ahead and double click on it. That launches the installer. First we have our welcome page, then our end user uh, license agreement. After reading it, click on OK. Select agree. This tells you how much space this is going to take up on your computer. You click on install. It's going to go ahead and ask you to type in your password. I'm going to go ahead and cancel out of this because I already have the plugin installed. Once you finish that, it will come back and let you know the plugin has been installed on your computer. Go ahead and click on OK. If you had Final Cut Pro X open, go ahead and close out of it and reopen it. Now that we have the plugin installed, go ahead and open up Final Cut Pro X. I have Final Cut Pro X open along with the project set up. I'm going to go ahead and navigate over to my generator's browser and come down and see 40 TV Split Screen Plus. I'll notice here, I also have Split Screen Lite installed. It's the same as Plus, except it only has three generators included, but it is free and it's located on, or you can find it on 40tv.com. I'll switch back over to Plus. I'll notice it comes with 25 generators, and I'm going to hide this portion of the browser by clicking here. Next, uh, alternatively, you can go to the Themes browser and you can navigate or browse uh, the Split Screen Plus here as well. I'll sw switch back over to Generators, minimize that, and I'm going to drag one of these into my timeline. When I do so, it's going to ask me what my video property should be because I didn't have a clip already loaded in the timeline. These were designed in 1080p, um, and so they will work in 1080, 720, or standard definition. Um, obviously, they'll look different in standard definition because as Final Cut Pro X resizes them to fit, um, keep in mind these were designed in a widescreen format. I'll go ahead and click on OK. Next, I'll go ahead and open up my uh, inspector to see the options or parameters for this particular generator. Uh, we want to go ahead and add some clips or footage to either side of this screen so let me come over here to my events browser and I'll find two clips to drag underneath the generator. I'll drag this one and let's take this one. So as I've dragged them in I'll notice that they're not all the same size. By default, this generator can be increased in size, but this clip cannot be increased in size or this piece of footage. So I'm going to change the length to match this other clip. I'm going to go ahead and turn snapping on by pressing N on my keyboard, and I'm going to drag this clip to match the width or the distance uh, or the length of the other two clips. I'll make sure that I have the generator selected. I'll come back to the um, inspector. And I'll see that first things first, I have left frame, uh, which is a drop zone um, or drop well. If I click on it, I can add clips or footage to that uh, drop zone. What's very important to note is right now I'm on frame zero um, or the beginning of this uh, generator. If I was on a different frame, let's say uh, two seconds into this generator, and I click right here, and I add this clip by coming over here, clicking on frame zero and click, uh, selecting apply, you'll notice that if I scroll back to frame zero and I press play, nothing happens until where I added the clip, right? It creates a freeze frame based on the first frame of this footage for the length of time that this generator had going before. If that's the effect you're looking for, cool. Otherwise, go ahead and press the X here bring your playhead back to the beginning of this, uh, this clip, this generator. Um, right now, for me, it's frame zero because I don't have any other clips in my timeline. But if you had other clips in your timeline, then just bring it back to the beginning of the generator itself. Next thing, come up to the left frame, click on the image well, and then we'll come over here to frame zero. S click on it, select apply clip, and next, if we scroll through, Hey, we see it's uh, being animated and added to that clip. Next thing's next. I'm going to go ahead and click on right frame right here. Click on the drop zone. I'll come over here to the beginning of this one, and I'm going to click. Then I'll say apply clip. After doing so, I'll notice when I have this selected, both of them are playing right here uh, in the generator. So when I press spacebar, we can preview that. 
Next thing's next, I'm gonna go ahead and select both of them, press V on my keyboard to disable them, and we'll notice something happen. You see this black area, there's some frame separation going on between the two drop zones. That can be controlled here in the parameters of the generator. If I scroll down, I'll see frame separation. Right now it's at 100, if I bring it down to zero, you'll notice that there is no separation between these two frames. When I drag it back up to 100, there is separation. If this value is over zero, then I can turn on a solid background. You'll notice right now it's white by default. I can click on this, I can switch it to red, green, whatever color I want to suit my project. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this off. By default, it's not black, it's transparent. So if I had a clip on below, let me enable this by pressing V, I'll notice that it's right here between the two clips, right? I'll disable it again by pressing V. I'll scroll back to the beginning of my timeline, select the generator itself, and let's go over the other properties. You'll notice that for each individual frame, I have uh, position, scale, and opacity controls. All of them can be animated. The X and Y are the offset of this uh, clip um, within the frame itself. If I adjust it, because this frame is uh, basically the width of my project, you're gonna see that I'm creating some black area here. That can be changed by increasing the scale. Alternatively, if you're going for a different look, you can uh, shrink it by dragging the scale in the opposite direction. I can also change the opacity of this frame. Um, I'll go ahead and bring the scale back up to 100, and we'll set the X offset back to zero. We already went over these, or these properties or parameters are available for each frame, so they do the same thing for this frame as well. We went over frame separation, solid background, and setting the color of the background. I'm gonna go ahead and delete these and I'm gonna show you a couple other things. These are true for all of the generators here within the, the browser, but I'm gonna show you, for example, if you come over here to triangle three, I drop it into my timeline. I'll switch over to 720p, select OK. I'm actually going to drag a clip in with audio into my timeline. When I drag this in, this clip itself um, I took from a tutorial I did on Halftone, another plugin available at 40tv.com. But the reason I brought this in is because it has audio. If I right click on this clip and select detach audio, what I can do is I can make sure that when I add this, um, when I add this clip into one of the drop zones, um, now the audio is separated and it will play in the same time as this clip. So I'll come back over here and I'll make sure that I'm on uh, frame zero with the triangle uh, generator selected. I'll come up here and let's select the middle frame. I'll click on it. I'll come to the beginning of my timeline. I'll click, say apply clip. And I'll see that now this is being applied to the generator. If I come back over here, I can make sure that I have a solid background uh, selected if I want it. Um, alternatively, if I don't want it, then I can go ahead and click on this. We'll notice it's not exactly at frame zero. I can press V to disable it so it's not, not showing up in the separation, if I wanted that separation. Now if I press spacebar, you'll notice the audio is playing in time with the video. Uh, another thing to point out, when I click on the generator here, and I scroll, uh, or not scroll down yet. I can turn off the opacity of these. Let's say I just want the video to play in this triangle here. This will render out as black right here and we'll be good. Alternatively, I, of course, I can add stuff. Um, I can change the separation here. This obviously is only gonna really show you the difference if we have something in these images. If uh, I drag another clip in here, let's say I wanna add um, Let's bring this right here. And I can go ahead and scroll on my timeline. Actually, I'll just select my blade tool. I'll click. I'll select my uh, selector tool by pressing A. And I'll go ahead and delete these two. I'll press uh, Shift Z to fit them into my timeline. I'll scroll back until I'm at the beginning of this. Um, oops. Let's go ahead and make sure that matches. I'll make sure I'm at the beginning of my generator. Make sure it's selected. I'm gonna click on the left frame. I'll come over here to the beginning and I'll make sure that I'm on frame zero. I'll click, say apply clip. And now if I click, we'll notice that that's in that left frame. Hey, well, you know what we can do is we can add it to the right uh, triangle as well by clicking here, coming over here, making sure I go to frame zero, clicking, 
selecting apply clip, coming back up to the top, selecting my generator, and if I scroll down, now I can go ahead and first disable this clip, and I'll notice that for some reason, I did not, oh, I have the opacity turned down here, so I'll turn that back up to 100%. I'll make sure that the other ones that set it 100%, and I'll go ahead and preview this. Square is one, square is two. That's pretty uh, iconic, almost uh, makes me look like I'm a little more authoritative or something like that, right? The tutorial is more powerful. Anyways, as you can see, there's lots of possibilities with this. I'll show you a couple other, uh, or one other quick example before I end this tutorial. I'll go ahead and delete all this stuff from my timeline. And uh, t -t -t let's go ahead and drag in vertical too. When I do so, uh, let's leave it at 1080p. Uh, Click on OK. When I do so, alternatively what I can do, let's say I want to uh, insert one of these drop zones or generators into this generator. I can do that. So I'll go ahead and drag horizontal 2 into my time uh, timeline. I'll go ahead and pick uh, this clip right here and maybe the halftone clip. Whoops. The screen real estate is tough. I'm spoiled. I have a large monitor and <laughs> this is seriously irritating working at this resolution. I'll go ahead and make them a little bit smaller so I can see a little bit more. I'm going to disable vertical 2 for now because I'm not using it. What I'm trying to do is set up horizontal 2. So I'll make sure I'm on the beginning of frame 0 here. I'll make sure these uh, two clips are dragged in properly. I'm going to adjust them to fit the same amount of timing. In fact, I'll do that for the hidden or disabled clip as well. Next thing, I'm going to go ahead and uh, come into my inspector, click on the... I think I have the wrong... I'll go ahead and click cancel. I don't think, yeah, I didn't have the right generator selected. So if I click on top frame here, I come to the beginning of my timeline, I click, and then I say apply clip, you'll notice that it's applied um, the halftone tutorial to the top part of my clip. Next thing I'll do is I'll click on the bottom frame. I'll come over here to my timeline, find clip zero, or frame zero, click on apply clip, and now it's applied that there. Now I'll go ahead and select both these clips. I'll disable them by pressing V on my keyboard. I'll scroll back to the beginning, and I'll notice that horizontal too has both of these clips uh, uh, applied. Next, if I come back over and I enable vertical 2, this generator, I can select this uh, horizontal as one of the drop zones here. So let's say I want to add it to my left drop zone. I'll click on this button here, come over here to frame 0, click, select apply, and I'll notice that now I just created a new look with using a generator within a generator. Next thing, I'll select this generator, press V on my keyboard to disable it so that we don't see it here in the background. Now, there's a couple things to note. Changing the, the offsets, changing the, the frame separation, all that for these two clips would have to be done here, and it's not dynamic. So if I notice here, we're, see we're not seeing the top part of my face, for example, well, that would have to be fixed before I brought this into this generator. However, it's important to note that I do have some mixed... Uh, generators. So if I see here, I have this one mix left two. I have mix bottom three, mix bottom two. Now these are dynamic because they're built into the generator, but just giving you more options by being able to add generators into generators. I hope you guys like this tutorial. And if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. And if you like my content, please like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Till next time, guys, I'm out.